following video demonstrates that the theory of evolution is useful for making sense out of biological observations. According to an article published in the journal Retrovirology in October 2006, if Charles Darwin reappeared today, he might be surprised to learn that humans are descended from viruses as well as from apes. Some 8% of human DNA represents fossil retroviral genomes. What exactly is a fossil retroviral genome? Retroviruses are viral particles that reproduce inside host cells through the use of an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. This enzyme transcribes the virus's RNA genome into DNA that is then inserted into the host DNA. In this way, retroviruses manage to evade the body's natural defense mechanisms as they make new copies of themselves. The most well-known retrovirus is the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. An endogenous retrovirus, or ERV, is a stretch of DNA that has been left behind by a past retroviral infection. If a retrovirus infects a germline cell, those cells that produce sperm and egg, then every cell in the resulting offspring will contain the retroviral DNA sequence within it. Once inserted into a host genome, ERVs may continue to replicate and evolve, or they may become inactivated by mutations during the replication process. Therefore, under the right conditions, retroviral infections of a germline cell can make a detectable mark on the genome of the resulting offspring. Once this mark becomes fossilized in the genome, it will be passed down to all future descendants. What follows is a brief history of scientific discoveries concerning endogenous retroviruses. The so-called central dogma of molecular biology was first enunciated by Francis Crick in 1957. This proposition stated that once information gets into a protein, it cannot get back to DNA again. In other words, information flow in the cell goes from DNA to RNA to protein and not in the other direction. In 1961, researchers reported that cells transformed by an RNA virus called RSV remain transformed even after several subsequent rounds of cell division. This suggested that the viral RNA had somehow affected the DNA of the host cell. Such an observation appeared to contradict the assumption that information only flows from DNA to RNA to protein. Two years later, in 1963, a possible solution to this puzzle was proposed. Researchers suggested that the RNA virus made a DNA copy of itself and then integrated this DNA into the host genome. This hypothesis was debated for the next several years without a clear resolution. Then, in 1968, it was experimentally demonstrated that some DNA viruses were capable of becoming integrated into their host DNA. However, the notion of a DNA copy of an RNA virus being passed from parent to offspring was still regarded as bizarre. The resolution to this puzzle finally came in 1970, when reverse transcriptase, the enzyme that makes DNA copies of RNA, was discovered. The discovery of reverse transcriptase confirmed the earlier hypothesis. RNA viruses really could make DNA copies of themselves and become integrated into their host's genome. In 1974, the retrovirus finally gained its name, and the existence of endogenous retroviruses soon became a widely acknowledged scientific fact. In the decades since the discovery of the retrovirus, numerous molecular studies have shown that the genomes of all vertebrate species contain evidence of ERVs. For instance, in a 1989 study, researchers found that a group of endogenous retroviruses, known as human endogenous retrovirus type 2, are characteristic of humans, apes, and old-world monkeys. The detection and identification of these sequences provides an opportunity to test predictions generated by evolutionary theory, specifically predictions related to common ancestry. One such prediction is quite simple. If evolution by common descent is a correct description of the origin of human beings, then we should share ample evidence of ERV sequences with our closest relative, the chimpanzee. With the completion of both the human and chimpanzee genome projects in the last decade, this prediction has been extensively and definitively tested. It turns out that we do share ERV sequences with chimpanzees at identical locations on our respective chromosomes. For instance, in exactly the same spot on the long arm of chromosome 19, humans and chimpanzees have the same ERV sequence. Could this be merely a coincidence? It is possible, but highly unlikely. For it to be a coincidence, the ancestors of modern humans and chimpanzees would have to have been separately infected by the same retrovirus that inserted its DNA in exactly the same chromosomal location in their respective genomes. It is possible to roughly calculate the likelihood. ERVs infect their hosts by inserting their DNA into the host genome in what are called integration sites. 
Each of these integration sites is approximately 100,000 to 250,000 base pairs in length. And for each ERV, there are approximately 500 to 2,000 possible integration sites. That means there are, at minimum, 50 million possible locations where an ERV can insert itself into the genome, and it does so randomly each time. It is therefore highly improbable that humans and chimpanzees would independently be infected by the same ERV sequence at the same location on the chromosome. The evidence is even more compelling when we consider the fact that humans and chimpanzees share about 16 instances of ERV sequences, all of which occur in the same chromosomal locations in our genomes. The odds against this happening by chance are truly astronomical. The only reasonable explanation for these shared sequences between humans and chimpanzees is that we inherited them from our common ancestor. To further explore the implications of the evidence provided by ERVs, it helps to think about how ERVs would be propagated within a model of evolution by common descent. In this diagram, all branches after the insertion points carry that retroviral DNA, a reflection of the fact that once a retrovirus has inserted into the germline DNA of a given organism, it will be inherited by the descendants of that organism. First, let's imagine that the common ancestor of all modern mammals was infected by a retrovirus that became endogenous on one of its chromosomes. Since insertions are shared by all of the species that have a common ancestor, all modern mammals would therefore be expected to carry the same ERV insertion, let's call it ERV1, in the same location on the chromosome. Now let's move forward in evolutionary time. Different lineages have evolved and diverged from the original common ancestor, and there are now many different types of mammal in existence, all carrying ERV1. A small rodent-like creature, the common ancestor of all mice and rats, is again infected by a retrovirus that becomes endogenous. This is ERV2. In a parallel event in a different lineage, the common ancestor of all great apes acquires a third insertion, ERV3. Moving forward again, a fourth ERV appears in early hominids in Africa, but not in their hairier relatives who will eventually become modern chimpanzees. The early humans spread out, and a fifth and final ERV arises in a population that is isolated in a discrete geographical location. This infection does not spread to other human populations. Based on this model, we would expect humans, chimps, mice, and rats to all possess ERV1. The mouse and rat genomes would also contain ERV2, the virus that infected their common ancestor, but not the primate-specific ERV3, 4, or 5 insertions. In addition, we would expect that the rodent-specific ERV2 insertion would not be found in the primate species. Humans, chimps, and the other great apes would share an identical ERV insertion, ERV3. All humans would possess an ERV4 insertion that is not found in chimps or the other great apes. In addition, some, but not all, humans would carry an insertion of ERV5. Now that several genomes have been sequenced, scientists have begun to test these predictions. The patterns of ERV insertions observed in modern species exactly match the predictions made by the model just described. Some insertions are shared between primates and rodents and represent truly ancient viral infections. Others are found only in primates and not in other species, obviously derived from an infection of the ancestral primate species after its divergence from other lineages. More modern insertions are found only in humans, while the youngest ERVs of all are found in some humans but not in all. And, just as expected, we do not find any examples of ERV insertions that are shared by, say, humans and mice, but not also by chimpanzees. In other words, we do not find an ERV in the same position in two distantly related species without also finding it in each of the intervening species. Clearly, the best explanation for this pattern of shared ERV sequences is that it is the result of inheritance from common ancestors. So, there you have it. Basic virology and cutting-edge molecular research leads us to a powerful explanation of a large set of biological observations. These observations only make sense using the real science of evolution. I'm Jeremy Moan. Thanks for watching my video. This video lesson has been brought to you by Stand Up For Real Science, a website devoted to defending the teaching of mainstream science in public school science classrooms. Visit us at www.anevolvingcreation.net slash standup.